Hi everybody, welcome to GT Coding. We are in the process of designing a one page website from scratch with the help of Figma design. And uh, we had designed all these sections over here and uh, in the last video we designed the footer. Now in this video I'll show you how to make this navigation menu work. So let's get started. <laughs> Alright, first of all, let's fix an issue that we have with this navigation menu. You can see that it has moved up and uh, it was not how we designed it earlier. Now, the position has changed because uh, we set the display of the anchor tags to inline block for us to have the margins over here in the last video. So, let's go to our uh, source code and uh, let's go to style.css and if we scroll down, we can see this is where we had uh, written display inline block for our buttons. Now we don't want display inline block to be applied to the navigation menu. So let's go over here and uh, cut this line of code from here. And uh, we will add display inline block to all the buttons inside a section. So we'll tap section a.btn and we'll paste the line of code right here. Alright, so now we can see that the anchor tags are working fine and uh, we have the margins over here as well all right so let's go ahead and start with the navigation menu the first thing we need to do is uh, we need to set the href for our anchor tags so if you go to the html we can see for the href we have written hash now if you want the user to be taken to a different website then you can just type the url of the website over here for example, if you type google.com, then the user will be taken to google.com if he clicks on the about link. And if you want the user to be taken to another page of our own website, then we can name the page over here, for example, about.html. Or if it is inside any directory, you can just type the name of the directory over here, forward slash the name of the page. But in our case, we want to navigate to a section of the same page. So for that, we will use IDs. So what you can do is you can just type hash over here and write the name of the ID. For example, if you create an ID called about, then you can just type hash about and then you can add ID about to whichever section you want the user to be taken to. So let's go over here to the about section and let's add an ID and we'll type about. All right, so let's go to our website and see whether it works. So let's click on about and we can see that we are taken to the about section so we'll do the same with all the other sections so let's go over here and uh, for the project section we will add an id and we'll call it projects and uh, then for the testimonial section we will add an id and we'll type testimonials over here and uh, then we have the contact section all right so now let's uh, update the anchor tags so here we have projects then here we have testimonials and then here we have contact and even for the get started button we will have contact and then for the logo of our website we will just type hash because it will take us to the top of our page all right so let's go ahead and test whether it works so let's click on our projects uh, we have a typo over here so let's change this to our projects all right, so let's click on our projects and uh, testimonials, contact, get started. All right, so everything is working all right. All right, now the next thing is to add smooth scrolling. So whenever we click on any of these uh, menu items, we want to navigate to that section smoothly. So for that, we'll go to our CSS and uh, we will add a style to the HTML. And here we will type scroll behavior and we'll set it to smooth All right now let's go to our website and see whether it works so let's click on our projects and we get smoothly taken to that section All right now the last thing to do is add the active class to different menu items so for example if you are in the our project section the active class that is this uh, red border over here should be under the our projects menu item and if you go to the testimonial section, it should be under the testimonials menu item. So for that, we'll be using JavaScript. So let's go ahead and uh, go to the main.js file. And if you go to the index.html, we can see that uh, we have already linked our main.js file over here. 
So let's go over here and we'll be using something called intersection observer for this. So what we can do with intersection observer is that we can know when an element is on the screen and when it is out of the screen. So for example, if the contact section is out of the screen, then we know that it is not here. And when it comes into the screen, the intersection observer lets us know that the contact section is in the viewport. And then we can set different actions to that. So let's go ahead and see how it works. So the first thing we need to do is uh, create an intersection observer object. So we'll type const observer. This is the name that we'll give for the observer. And we'll set it equal to new intersection observer. And we'll have two arguments over here. One is a callback function. So we'll create a function called add active class. And the next is an object with uh, the options. So for that we'll create an object with the name of options. Now the next thing is to observe the elements. So we want to observe all the sections. So these are all different sections. And we want to observe them and see whether they are on the screen. So first of all, let's reference all the sections. So we'll just type const sections and uh, we'll set it equal to document dot query selector all. So here we will reference all the sections. So we'll type section over here. Now all our sections will be stored inside this sections constant. Now the next thing is to observe all the sections. So we'll use a for each loop for this. So we'll type section dot for each. And here you have to create a callback function. So we'll just give an argument called section. And uh, here we will type observer dot observe. And we'll observe each of the different sections. So what we're doing over here is that we are going through each of the sections inside uh, this sections constant. And then for the individual sections, we are calling it section and using this observer object and observing each of the different sections. All right now, let's go ahead and create the options object. So we'll type const options equals and we'll just leave it blank for now. Now we'll create this callback function called add active class. So we'll type const add active class. Now for the callback function of an intersection observer, we need to have two arguments over here. One is for the entries and the other is for the observer. So we'll just name them entries and observer. Now since we have a number of entries, we will use a for each loop to loop through all the entries. So here we'll type entries dot for each. And here we'll type entry. And now we can access each of the individual entry by just using this uh, entry variable over here. Now to check whether any of the entry is on the screen, we can just use an if condition and we can type entry dot is intersecting. And we'll test whether it is working by just typing console dot log and we'll type entry dot target. So this will show us which of the entry is on the viewport right now. So let's go to our website and let's right click over here and click on inspect. And let's go to console and uh, here we can see that first we have the about section and then we also have the project section. If we scroll down, we can see the testimonial section is being displayed over here. If we scroll down again, the contact section. And if we scroll up, the about section is being displayed. So now we can use this technique to add active class to each of these different menu items. So let's go ahead and uh, here, first of all, we'll just comment this line of code and uh, let's create a new variable and uh, we'll name it current active. And this variable will be used to know which of the menus is active right now. So let's type document dot query selector. And uh, we'll type desktop nav a dot active. So right now, if you go to the HTML, we can see that the first menu item is active. So we have a class of active over here. So right now we have the first menu item inside this variable current active. Now we have to add the active class to whichever section is entering the screen. Now before adding the active class to any other menu item, we need to first remove the active class from the current active element. So let's type if current active. So this will check whether any of the elements has the active class. So if it is the case, then we will type current active dot class list dot remove active. So this will remove the active class from the current active. So basically in our case, the active class from the about menu item will be removed. 
Now we need to add the active class to the current section which is visible on the screen. So for that we'll create a new variable and we'll call it new active and we'll set it equal to document dot query selector. Now what we'll do is we'll get the ID of the entry that is on the screen. So for example if we are on the testimonial section then we'll get the ID of this section. So if you go to the index.html file and if we scroll down we can see for the testimonial section we have an ID of testimonials and this is the same ID that we had given over here. So now we can make a connection between the menu item and the section. Now here in our JavaScript we will get the menu item which has the same href as the ID of the current section. So if you are in the testimonial section we will get the menu item which has the href of the ID of this section. So the ID of this section is testimonials. So we will select the menu item with the href of testimonials and then we will add the active class to this. So in OJS we will use template literals for this because uh, we'll also be using this entry variable in our uh, string. So here we'll type dot desktop nav and uh, in square brackets we'll just type href equals hash. So here we can see we have href equals hash and then here we have the ID. So we are getting the ID from the entry. So here we will just type dollar symbol and uh, we can just add a variable over here. So we'll type entry dot target which will give us the current section and uh, then we'll get the ID attribute from that. So we'll type get attribute and uh, in parenthesis we will type ID and we also need to add double quotes over here before the hash symbol. So if you go to the index.html we can see we have double quotes. So here we will type double quotes and uh, we will end it after this variable. Alright, so now new active has the menu item which is connected to the current section. So now the only thing we need to do is add the active class to this new active element. So we'll type new active dot class list dot add active. Alright, so now let's go to our website and see whether it works. So we have the active class in about right now. Let's scroll down and see whether the active class is being applied to the our project section. So we have the active class applied to the our project section but uh, we also have the active class in the about section. We'll figure that out. Alright, the active classes are being added but the previous ones are not being removed. So let's go to our JS and uh, here we have a typo. We need to add dot over here because it is a class name. So let's test it once more. So let's scroll down and uh, we can see when we are at our project section, the our projects menu item is active. Let's scroll down and then we can see the testimonial section is active and then the contact menu item. Now we can see that the active classes are being added too early. So if we scroll down and whenever we see even a little bit of the our project section, the menu item gets activated. So for that we'll use some options inside the intersection observer. So here we can have threshold which specifies when the action should happen. So we'll type threshold and we can have values from 0 through 1. So I'll just type 0 0.8 over here and uh, here for the if condition we will add one more condition and we'll check whether entry dot intersection ratio is greater than or equal to 0 0.2. So these are the values that I came up with for the intersection ratio and the threshold after a lot of testing. We need to remove the semicolon from here. You can go ahead and change these values and get different results. So just stick with the values which you feel are the best for your website. So now let's go ahead and test our website. So let's refresh our page. And let's scroll down. And we can see when the our project section is right here, this menu item is active. Let's scroll down. So everything is working all right. We can even click on any of these menu items and the active class is being added. 
So that's basically it for this video. I hope that you found this useful and uh, if you like this video, please click on the like button and if you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.